In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple 3D printed screwable lid jar. So the jar will have threads that are 3D printed and a nice threaded cap. The first thing to do is to create a new component. We'll call this component base. Click OK, then select Create Cylinder. Select the ground plane, that's the one between the green and the red. Then select the origin. And for our dimensions, we're going to make this really small so we can 3D print it quickly, but you can make other dimensions as well. Type 25, then press tab, enter. Now we can enter this dimension. For this one, we'll type 20 millimeters. And now we have the base of our jar. We're going to go ahead and create one more cylinder for the threads. Create cylinder. Select the top area here, then the center. Drag this out and type 20, enter. And then we'll just go up, let's say five to seven. I'm gonna say five for now. The next thing we need to do is shell this out. If you look under the modify command, this little box right here is shell. If I select that and then select the top here, I can type in a wall thickness of two. Now the cylinder is hollowed out. So we have a jar, but we wanna kinda of do a couple things to make this easier to 3D print. The first thing to do is to fix this overhang. You can't see it now, but on the inside of this jar, it's flat. In order to see that, select Inspect Section Analysis, and then we can select any plane. So we can select this plane here or any of the other ones, and then press OK. If you orbit around, you can see that this is not going to work. To fix that, go to Modify Chamfer. Select this top edge. Then type 2.5 because that's half of 5 millimeters. So type in 2.5 there. Then we can do one more chamfer for the bottom to make it a little stronger. So go modify chamfer, select this line, and we can just do two. Or maybe one will be nicer so we have more space in the jar. Then select OK. So this section shows us that this will be able to be 3D printed without supports. And over here on analysis, you can have many different analysis tools, and you can turn them on and off. So that's really nice. So for now, I'm gonna leave the analysis off. The next thing to do is to add threads to this. In order to do that, we'll select Create Thread. If I select this face, it'll give me an option to make threads, and I'll press OK. Notice that these are just image threads. They're not actually a physical model. We can change that by right-clicking in the design timeline, editing the feature, and selecting modeled. If we do this, we'll notice that sometimes the threads will go cut into the piece. So this is a good use of the analysis tool. I can click on the view cube to the side, and then we can decide what size we want. Right here in the class of thread, if I change this to 4G, 6G, That'll have a little bit more tolerance for 3D printing. And we definitely want to use the biggest thread pitch we possibly can. So I think I'm going to leave it at M20, 2.5, and press OK. But there's one thing we need to do. If you notice that this top edge is really sharp, I'm going to turn off the analysis. We want that to kind of be tapered in. But if I go to Modify Chamfer, there's nothing I can click here. I have another video showing how to add lead-in to threads. But if you forget to do it, all you need to do is on the design timeline, roll your playhead back before the threads, then go modify chamfer, select this outside edge. We can type one millimeter for right now, then press OK. Then go forward in the playhead. Now there's no chamfer, but if I move this forward after the threads, Fusion remembers where that is, and then that will go down and be chamfered just like that. So now I can edit this chamfer to be bigger or smaller, however I need. And then it'll be reflected in that thread profile. So that's a little trick to get Fusion to be able to have a lead in on the threads. So I think the base is just about done. Probably the last thing we want to do is add a chamfer to these edges. So click chamfer, this edge and this edge, and then 0.5 millimeters. So now that looks really great, and we can put all kinds of cool stuff in it. Remember, this is only 
25 millimeters in diameter. So it's pretty small, but it gets the point across of how to model any size jar. The next thing to do is select the top level component. Currently it's unsaved. So a pretty good idea to save your project right now. And then with the top level component selected, remember, make sure this dot isn't selected. We want the top level component. Click create new component and label it lid. Remember that the top of this jar is 20 millimeters. Good idea to take notes when you're making models, but we happen to remember that. So the first operation we're going to do is construct an offset plane. So right here under construction, offset plane. And then what we want to do is select the bottom plane. And it can be hard to select. Of course, you can turn off the base and then select it. But you can also select through by clicking and holding and then selecting the XY plane. And then the distance we want to offset is 20 millimeters. Now we will create a cylinder. And where will we create it? Not down here but on this offset plane. Then on the origin, diameter will be 25. And we want it to go above the threads. So we definitely need to go above five. So you can click on the side view, drag this up. Five would be right there. So you need at least two more. I think going up to eight is probably a good idea. Make sure this says new body. If this is getting in the way, you can just turn it off so you don't see it. Now we're going to go ahead and shell out the top. To do this, we'll type two for the wall thickness and then press OK. Now we need to add threads to the lid. So create, thread, select this inside curved face. And remember, we're going to use M20 by 2.5. And then we can say OK. In this case, I'm not going to model them yet because I want to have the taper already. So in this case, I'll go to Modify, Chamfer, select this inside edge, and we'll do the same amount, 1.5. So that'll give us a little lead in and make it easier to screw the lid closed. Press OK. And now since we haven't made the threads modeled yet, just right click on the timeline, Edit Feature, then select Modeled. So now since the chamfer is after the threads, everything is correct right from the start. I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the base and then turn on the section analysis. So orbit around to where you can see your section. We have this nice intersection of the lid and the base for the threads. Since it's 3D printing and there's not the best tolerances, I'm gonna show you how you can move these threads to add a little bit more space so they work better for 3D printing. First, let's go ahead and add a chamfer on the outside of this lid. I'm gonna turn off the analysis, click Modify Chamfer, and I wanna click this edge and the bottom edge of the lid, and we'll type 0.5 millimeters. That'll just make it a little bit nicer to grab onto. So now let's go ahead and fix the thread so they have a better chance of 3D printing correctly. So again, turn on the analysis and I'm going to hide the base. We don't want to do this to the base because you notice there's not a lot of material right here because it's open. We have a lot more material on the lid. So we're going to make the threads on the lid a bit smaller. So hide the base. So we have a bit more space. We need to offset faces. So go to modify offset face. First, we'll select this outer face. Then we'll select this inner face. So those are the two edges. So this inner edge and this outer edge. And then we need to either select the top or the bottom, but not both. Because otherwise, if you select the top and the bottom, it'll distort the shape of the threads. And what we need to do is have it go in a negative direction. See this arrow right here? If I type one, notice that the threads get bigger. So we don't want that. So we want negative 0.15. So that's going to make the thread smaller and press OK. If I bring back the base, there'll be a bit more space here. So now you can see how there's going to be a bit more clearance. The last thing we can do is add a fillet to some of these edges. Some of them won't be possible because they'll be very tight and narrow, but we want to add fillets anywhere we can. So I'm going to hide the base and we'll add fillets to this first. It's a little confusing working in the section view, but it makes it a lot easier. So we'll click fill it, then we're going to click edges. Let's do these front edges first, and then these interior edges, and we'll type 0.1. 
So now that gives a nice rounded edge and you can press the control or command key to add selections. So if I add this selection, notice it gives me an error. So we'll have to do that when separate or leave it alone. And then I can also add in potentially this top one. If I hold command and I get this top edge, in that particular case, that worked. So I'm going to say, okay. Now that just rounds out those pieces. So now our lid is done. We can go to the base. And whenever you're working on a component in Fusion, don't just show it and then start doing things. You want to activate that component. So right now the lid is activated. I want to select the base. So now the base is activated. And this changes what's down in the timeline. So now let's go ahead and fill it out some of these edges. And we can turn off the section so we can see a little bit easier. Click fill it, which makes rounded edges. And I'm going to click this edge, this edge, and this edge and then these interior edges and then type 0.1 and if it rounded them all out we're good to go so then you can look for any other sharp edges hold the command or control key and then sometimes when you're doing this you'll add an edge and fusion is unable to calculate it that's fine you can just unselect it so now that looks nice and rounded i'll press ok let's bring the lid back and the section Look at the front and to the side. Now you can see how these edges have a little bit more rounding to them. You can go back in and fix any of these other edges one at a time. So if I want to fix this one, I want to select the lid, select that edge, fill it, point one, then press OK. So if you miss any, it's OK to add it as a separate operation. Just make sure you activate the right component. So now I have a nice rounded edges so my 3D print threads will thread together better. Lastly, let's add some details. If I go up to the top level component, turn off section, we can see our jar is looking great. But I want to put some text on the side here. So I'll activate the base. Then I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'm just going to create it on the plane right here. Then under sketch, you can create text. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. And the sample text will be what make art. I'll leave it at 10 millimeters and then I'll just center it. Uh, maybe I'll make it eight millimeters so it definitely fits. And press OK. Now we have this text and we can finish the sketch. Finish the sketch by clicking finish sketch. Then under create, select emboss. It asks you what sketch profile, select the sketch profile, then what face. Let's select this face. And it has a big depth of two millimeters. 3D print filament commonly has line widths of 0.4 millimeters. So we want to do a multiple of 0.4. And so that'll print really well on our 3D printer. And then you can make it go inside. So cut in, or you can make it go outside up to you. If I press OK and go to the top level component, this is now ready to 3D print. Hopefully you are able to create a threaded jar for 3D printing in Fusion 360. Happy 3D modeling!